Hello and welcome back. This video is about Traffic, the first module by a new Euro app maker from Barcelona called Jasmine and Olive Trees. Traffic is a trigger-based CV controller that acts like a kind of preset switcher. This makes it really simple to set up three different drum or percussion sounds in a macro oscillator, like Mutable Instruments Platts or Noise Engineering's BIA, and then control those with individual triggers from a sequencer. But it's definitely not limited to those modules, and in this video I'll show you a few ways I've been using it with some other sound sources. Before we get into that, here's a quick taste of what's coming up. First up, I should mention that this video isn't sponsored and I have no affiliation with Jasmine and Olive Trees. I just pre-ordered Traffic when I saw it because I thought it looked like a beautifully simple, well thought out idea and it's really cheap. It kind of appeared out of the blue one day a few weeks back and there was a bit of buzz about it online so the first batch sold out quite quickly but there should be more available soon. Anyway, let's just firstly have a quick look at how it works. There are three trigger inputs at the top and then three rows which each have a CV output. If you send a trigger to input A, then each row outputs the voltage set by the first pot on that row and then holds that voltage until the next trigger is received. If you send a trigger to input B, the second pot on each row sets the value for that row's output, and if you send a trigger to input C, the third pot sets the value. There's a global switch to choose between unipolar 0 to 8 volts or bipolar minus 8 to plus 8 volt operation for all the pots. The idea is that you patch these three CV outputs to three different parameters on your voice, for example the model select, the tuning and the decay time in plats, and then each trigger then allows you to instantly jump to different combinations of those settings. There's also a trig sum output at the bottom which outputs a trigger whenever any of the three input triggers are active, that's basically like a logical OR combiner. Uh, this is super handy when you're setting up three sounds on the same module and you need to trigger the same input for every hit. You might be wondering what happens if you trigger more than one input at the same time, which is quite an important question. After all, the whole approach we're talking about here actually only lets you trigger one sound at a time from a single voice, there's no polyphony involved. So the answer is that channel A takes top priority, channel B takes second priority and channel C is the lowest priority. So you might want to think about that when you're dialing in your sounds for AB and C. A typical setup might be a kick drum on A, a snare sound on B and a hi-hat sound on C. Then there's this switch which offers you two modes that introduce a bit of randomness. The question mark mode picks a new random value for each output for each trigger, in effect giving you a new set of three randomly generated sounds. And then the groove mode leaves channels A and B alone but it creates a 16 step looping series of random values for channel C, which is very cool. I'll dive into this a bit deeper in the second patch. Last but not least, you actually get two modules for the price of one, believe it or not. There's a switch on the rear panel that activates an alternative firmware called Water, and the module ships with this overlay with new labels for all those controls. Water is basically an eight-step CV sequencer with three related outputs at different phases. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't even tried that yet as I've been having so much fun with Traffic, but I might feature that in a separate video one day. Now, it's probably fair to say that Traffic isn't the only module of its kind. The Zodes PV44 does basically the same thing, but with four groups of four voltages, or you could get a similar effect with a sequencer with multiple CV lanes and individually selectable stages like the Buchler 245T. But at this price and size, there's really nothing else like it, and I think the random modes and alternative firmware options really do set it apart. Anyway, that's enough chat, let's get into a few patches. Let's get started by patching up plats, because that's the most obvious kind of use case for this, um, especially with the modules I've got. So um, I've got three triggers from the BeatStep Pro, from the drum channel, going into A, B, and C, which you can see are lighting up when I hit these pads. Let's take the trig sum output um, into the trigger input of plats, and so now whenever any of these triggers are active, it's going to fire a trigger into plats. Um, and yeah, I've got plats set to the red kick drum mode, um, and if we take the first CV channel, I'm just going to reset all these, um, if we take that into the model CV input, and then hit the second, pa uh, second pad, and just adjust this 
until we get just enough CV to switch it into snare. And then we do the same with the third one and switch it into hi-hat. So you can see on the red plats LEDs, the kick drum's flashing because that's the kind of zero volt setting. And then with these different amounts, of, whenever I hit the second pad, it's going to hit enough CV to change that over to snare and enough CV to hit that over to hi-hat. Um, these don't sound quite right, so let's get another couple of um, these CV channels patched in so we can control the pitch and the decay. Let's go um, from the second row into the Volt Pro Octave input, which will let us tune these. And let's go from the third row, CVC, into the Morph input, which in these modes controls the decay time. And we'll just increase that attenuator to a maximum. And now, we can make that snare last a bit longer. We can add a bit of length to that kick drum. I can tune that snare as well with the middle row. Let's get a nice bright 808 snare. And the hi-hat. Let's get it nice and high pitched and a nice short decay. So we've got a nice 808 style. Which we can now program a pattern in the usual way on our BeatStep Pro. We want to change the tuning of the hi-hat, we can just do that, or the decay. Make the snare a bit longer maybe. So we've got a couple of other parameters on plat so we can still either tweak manually or use another CV modulator to control the harmonics here, controls the tone of a few things. And the tampa controls a couple of other things as well. But there, we've got that one module basically acting like a pretty decent little three voice drum machine now. Okay, for this patch I want to look at using the Surge VCFQ, or the Variable Q filter, um, as the sound source. And that's got a trigger input which lets you ping it, which is really great for percussion kind of sounds. So it's a natural candidate to pair with traffic. Um, I've got three triggers again set up from the BeatStep Pro, as before, going into the A, B and C. I've got the trig sum output going into the trigger input of the VCFQ, which will ping it. And then for the three CV outputs, I've got the first one controlling the pitch, going to the Volt Per Octave. I've got the second one effectively controlling the decay time by going to the uh, resonance input. So the higher the resonance, the longer the decay time when you ping a filter. Uh, and I've got the third one going to open a VCA, which lets in a variable amount of audio rate FM to the FM input. I've got a sine wave from the journal filter rate off screen, uh, audio rates coming in, and then depending on how much I've opened that VCA, it will FM the sound a certain amount. So the three sounds sound like this. This is the low one, trigger A. So that's kind of like a sort of like a low tom, 8080 tom kind of sound. Uh, the middle one. Same again, but with a bit more FM and a slightly different decay time, slightly shorter. And the third one, much higher in pitch with a bit more FM again. And again, that can be quite short and snappy. That's adjusting the amount of FM, which will affect the pitch as well. That's quite a good kind of trio of percussion sounds out just from that one filter. Let's just play a little pattern with those. And I've got some other drum sounds patched in from the BeatStep Pro. I've got a rack off screen with some 808 modules. Um, so just to kick a snare and some hi-hats just to go with this because this is more of a percussion thing rather than a full drum kit. Which sounds quite cool. And now I want to play with this little switch which um, lets you either pick new values for each of the sounds randomly, so I've to the question marks. So let's play in the same pattern, but we've now got some different ones. Flick back again to get to your original. Let's try again, see what it comes up with. Let's just go back to the um, version without the 808s to hear that a bit more clearly. There we go, that's something a little bit more. So this can give you an instant kind of fresh sound, and you can go back to your original. 
But the one I really like is the groove mode, which is the, if you flip the switch to the bottom, that keeps A and B the same, but it creates a series of 16 random options for channel C. And because channel C in this pattern has eight steps active, it means you get this kind of two bar pattern. Let's just flick it back. So we get a new two bar pattern every time I flick into groove. It's just so much fun being able to kind of come up with patterns like this on the fly. I spent a while earlier just recording a whole bunch of these in as loops. Okay, I've gone back to Platts for this patch. Um, this time I'm going to use one of the new FM DX7 algorithms from the new firmware. Uh, and I'm going to use the CV to control the harmonics, the morph and the tuning. And it's really great for coming up with kind of interesting techno loops. Where you're kind of constantly changing the sound rhythmically by playing with these CV controls. It's really easy to get wildly different. Sound palette. I've got this running through the Pladask Drad, by the way, for a little bit of um, atmospheric strange reverb. Let's just add a 909 kick drum. And let's play with the um, random switches again. The question marks will just give us a full new set of three, which may or may not be any good, but you can just play around. Sometimes get quite extreme. But what I quite like with this kind of mode is the groove mode again, which keeps A and B as they are for a bit of continuity and then just makes a 16 step pattern for part C. So it's kind of morphing through 16 different steps, which give it 16 different sounds. so many happy accidents this way it's really worth just kind of like recording a bunch and looping it Literally hours of fun, I could just mess around with this all day. Okay, so I want to look at using an analog sound source to create some tuned percussion kind of effects. In this case, I'm going to use the harmonic shift oscillator from New Systems Instruments, and I'm going to use the Zularic repetitor from Noise Engineering as the trigger source, clocked by Pamela's new workout. And I'm going to run the sh harmonic shift oscillator through uh, the Make Noise Optimix. I'll use the trig sum to strike that on the strike input. I'm going to run it through a little bit of spring reverb. And the three CV lanes on the traffic, I'm going to control the pitch, the harmonic level, and the harmonic stride on the harmonic shift oscillator, which lets me basically design the spectrum for each of the three hits. So here's how that sounds uh, with this quite busy rhythm. And by kind of playing with these 
This middle row here is controlling the, the harmonic stride, which is basically the spectrum. Let's tune it down. A bit of reverb and delay on this sounds quite nice and full bodied. This bottom row is the harmonic level, so this is how much of that harmonic spectrum we're boosting the basic sine wave by. harmonic strides we can dial in kind of harmonic spectrums or these kind of more inharmonic kind of percussive let's just shorten let's damp the LPG slightly Just try some different rhythms in Zillow Repetitor as well. kind of subdued bell-like sort of tones. Okay, finally for this video, I'm just going to look at using traffic as a kind of preset switcher for another digital oscillator. This time I've got the Zycol Dimension in here, which is a wavetable oscillator. And I'm going to use the drum trigger outputs on the uh, Arturia beat step to basically manually toggle between the three different um, trigger states. And then I'm going to use the CV outputs to control three different parameters, which I've assigned on Dimension using the, the kind of three CV inputs. So the first CV output will control the uh, wavetable position or the you know the wave in the table that's going to be played. Second one I've mapped to filter frequency for the cutoff frequency, it's got a built-in filter. And the third one I've mapped to the warp option on the dimension which lets you kind of mangle the waveform even further. So as I toggle between the three different triggers by tapping manually here, toggles between the three different waves. If I just play a little melodic sequence which is also coming from the Beatstep Pro, just um, CV and triggering uh, the dimension. So this is my trigger A settings, so I can basically choose away from the table with the first part. Let's keep A as a fairly almost signy kind of one. The second part lets me um, filter it. Let's just, um, so that's the filter cut off. Again, let's just bring that wave down to more of a sine wave one. And the third one warps that wave by kind of stretching. You can see on the display what it's doing there. So let's keep this first one as a sort of reasonably sine-ish one. Let's go to the second one by tapping. And here I've got set up a, a slightly more harmonically rich wave. So you can basically dial in the settings you like for that variation on the sound. And then go for the third one. just tap between them like this. So you could either manually switch like this in a performance or you could set up triggers in the drum channel for these three states to kind of switch between it rhythmically during the pattern. So I'm going to leave it there for today. Just a few little patches there just to show you what the traffic can do. Hopefully it gives you a few ideas if you've got one of these on order um, or if you've got other equivalent modules that can do the same kind of thing. Uh, as usual, thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.